So Windows 7 Forward has these troubleshooting diagnostics built right in. Uh, you can find them in the control panel under troubleshooting and basically they're little tools that will scan for common issues, resolve configuration or corruption issues and help repair a lot of common problems. And in addition to the ones you can get out of the control panel, there's all these ones that you can download from the Microsoft support websites. Sometimes these are referred to as fixits, and other times they're just troubleshooting packs like this. The fixits are compiled, and you can't usually view the source without some special tools to kind of get at the resources. But with the troubleshooting packs, you can actually open them up and see what's behind them, what commands are used to run the diagnostics and perform the repair. Most of these just use nothing more than a PowerShell script, and it's really just the troubleshooting pack that provides that user interface. I wanted to share today a little trick that you can use to actually look at the source of the troubleshooting packs you can download online, and then again, you can always create your own from the MSDN instructions. So to take a look at the inside of a troubleshooter, first you'll want to turn on your file extensions so you can rename the file. So I'll just go to view and tell this to uh, show file name extensions. That process is pretty similar in Windows 7, just go to your folder options and turn on that option. Now, then you'll just take the diag cab at the end, that's for diagnostic cabinet file, um, and you'll just name it as a cab. Cab is the Windows equivalent of zip, or it's the Windows implementation of a zip-like compression format that you know allows you know you to span disks. Basically, what zip did 20 years ago, cab does the same thing. And so anyway, you'll rename that to cab, and then double-click it to open it. The shell will browse just like a zip file would, so you don't get previews and you can't open a file directly from here, but you can extract it out. What I'm going to do is create a folder on my desktop, and I'm going to call this, you know, OneDrive Troubleshooter. And we'll just extract all these files, so I'll just drag these over into the OneDrive folder. Now once that extraction is complete, you'll be able to open those files just, you know, like anything else on your system including all of those PowerShell files that you see there. Now, th most of the data files you won't be able to read or you know view, but if we open up the PowerShell script, you'll be able to see all of the logic that's used for that troubleshooting. So here's a SkyDrive reset PowerShell script. I'll edit, it will open up in the PowerShell development environment, and then there you can see basically the exact steps that are carried out by the PowerShell engine when you are running this troubleshooter. Uh, I thought this was interesting. There's some kind of odd case here that's commented and says, I don't know how this scenario is even possible, but according to 26.3.003, I did some checking. I was curious if that was a knowledge base article number, but I can't seem to find what that's referencing, so it's probably internal. But still kind of interesting that, uh, you know, there's some case that this might be possible. Pretty odd there. So anyway, that's how you can view the innards of a troubleshooter. Just rename it to a cab file and, and dig right in like it was a zip. This actually works for one other file type, and that's the theme pack file here. Now these are the files that you would download if you go into the Windows personalization gallery and say get more themes. There's probably a thousand to choose from, but they all download as a theme pack. Normally when you double click a theme pack, it uncompresses it, applies the wallpaper, and case here applies to Microsoft uh, Hawaiian Adventure theme, but you can actually get to the source of those files as well. And to do that, you know, once again, just rename that theme pack to a .cab. That's really what it is. The only reason it's called theme pack is so that it knows how to open the file. So now that it's associated here as a cab, you'll open it up. And again, you don't get previews because it's just like a zip. It can't read the file until you extract it. So I'll create another new folder here on my desktop, and we'll call it you know, Flight for now. I'll just drag all of these cabinet files into that folder here. Ah, now this is a security prompt, and basically it's coming because this theme pack came from the internet. It basically has what a lot of folks in Unix would call the mark of the web, and that means that it's been stamped, that it came from the internet, and it could be dangerous, and so you'd have to click here, Save, 30 times. What I'm going to do is cancel this, and instead... I will remove that mark of the beast. So I'll go back to that cabinet file, or you know what was the theme pack, go to properties and say unblock. That removes that security warning from these files. And then when I go into it and drag those into my folder, now I'll just replace the you know few that I did. And it will be able to extract without any security prompts. And then from here you can view all the files that make up this Hawaiian Adventure theme pack. You can see all the wallpapers that get applied 
the sound files that are used for the special theme pack sound effects. Um, if there were special cursors, which are more rare these days, but if there were different cursors or icons or any other components of the theme, then you would be able to see that here as well. And finally, there's this dot theme file, which kind of like the theme pack that it was inside, that is also a set of instructions. So normally when you run that, it applies a theme. You can see what's inside that if you open it with Notepad. And you can tell that that's kind of the brains of this theme. It says, you know, which sound file or which cursor goes with which component in the system. So that's pretty much it. You know, you can dig into files like this. There's a lot of other examples, but that's, you know, theme packs and troubleshooting packs, really just calves on a different name. Hey, I'll post some more cool stuff later. Uh, for now, check out my website at commanderkeen.com.